Not all lakes are created equal. We break lakes into three basic types based on their productivity. You have low productivity, oligotrophic lakes. These lakes are deep, little to no shoal area, clear. Nutrients don't stay in the lake very long. There's a lot of flushing rates, inflow and outflow streams. Not a great place to find big trout. Then you have your middle level of productivity, mesotrophic or mesotrophic lakes. Little shallower, more shoal area, more weeds, the nutrients, more nutrients are staying in the lakes. And then you have the eutrophic lakes. These lakes are shallow, often less than 50 feet deep, rich weed growth, soft muddy bottoms, creating the perfect habitat for food and the big trout that come to feed on them. Within a lake itself, there are different zones. You have the shoreline area, let's say one to five feet deep, that area adjacent to the shore. This is where fish are gonna come in to feed early morning, late in the day, early spring prior to turnover, late fall. Then you have the shallow shoal area. This is where sunlight actually strikes the bottom of the lake, stimulating plant growth through photosynthesis. Think of the shoal area as the grocery store. This is where a majority of the food lives that the trout feed upon. This is the area you're gonna to wanna to spend the majority of your time in. Then we have the drop-off area where the lake transitions from the shallow shoal area into the deep water area. Trout love to cruise along the edges of drop-offs because they can make a quick foray onto the shoal for a bite to eat, and if something startles them or they feel unsettled, the security of deep water is nearby. And then you have the deep water zone. This is where trout go when they're not actively feeding, when perhaps environmental conditions such as weather systems have turned them off and put them down, they'll slide out into this deep water area and stage. There is some feeding out there, but the majority of the feeding is done on the shallow shoal area and that drop off area. As fly fishers, we want to try and target our efforts in water 20 feet deep or less. That's because, again, photosynthesis, stimulating weed growth, providing habitat for food, and from a presentation perspective, we can do lots of different things. Strike indicators, long leaders, sinking lines, washing line techniques, dry fly techniques. The whole gamut of our arsenal is at our disposal in the shallow shoal areas of the lake. Just like here on dry land, lakes experience the same seasons we do, winter, spring, summer, and fall. Let's take a detailed look at each season. During the late fall, as water temperature in the shoal areas of the lake cools into the mid to low 30s, trout retreat to deeper water where they will spend much of the winter. Trout are cold-blooded. In this cooler water, they don't move with any urgency. Trout require less food energy to fuel their metabolism reducing their activity at times to an almost hibernated state. At this time, trout rely primarily on the body fat they generated from feeding during the open water season. When a lake freezes over, it stratifies into two distinct layers, cooler, more oxygenated water sitting above warmer, less oxygenated water. Provided there is no snow, the sun's rays still penetrate through the ice, stimulating plant growth through photosynthesis. As snow covers the ice, light penetration reduces. Aquatic plants begin to die and anaerobically decompose, generating heat and consuming oxygen. As fish are the largest oxygen consumers in a lake, they are pushed into the shallower, cooler, oxygenated regions of the water. In the shallow productive lakes, harsh, prolonged winters can have deadly results. The decomposition process can consume all of the available oxygen suffocating the trout, a condition known as winter kill. As the largest fish require the most oxygen, they are always the first to die. Winter kills can be complete or partial. Lakes that don't ice over, such as those found in temperate coastal regions, still stratify, but as oxygen diffusion can still take place at the surface, winter kill is not an issue. Trout typically remain deep until the spring temperatures warm the shallows where they once again re-inhabit the shoal area. Immediately after the ice leaves the lake, it remains stratified. Trout are confined to the shallows where the highest concentration of oxygen can be found, often in less than 10 feet of water. If you can find the trout, fishing can be outstanding for roughly seven to 10 days after ice off. As the spring season progresses, the upper regions of the lake warms to the point it becomes the same temperature as the lower regions of the lake. Stimulated by wind, the water begins to mix or turn over, 
Anoxic water from the deep cycles to the surface where it diffuses with atmospheric air. This oxygen recharging process, known as turnover, is an essential ecological event. During turnover, oxygen levels are unsettled, water clarity is reduced, methane and hydrogen sulfide gas along with other chemicals are released. Decaying plant matter from the bottom is also dispersed throughout the water column. Turnover typically lasts five to seven days. During turnover, fishing is usually poor. Your best bet is to choose a higher elevation lake that has yet to turn over or a lower elevation lake that has already turned. Rich productive lakes that limp through winter, teetering on the brink of winter kill, are not out of danger once the ice leaves. Strong winds may stimulate an aggressive turnover that mixes the water and quickly disperses what little oxygen remains over a wide area. Trout, now without enough dissolved oxygen to survive turnover, suffocate, a phenomenon known as spring kill. Once the turnover process is complete, debris churned up through the mixing process settles, water clarity and chemistry improve. The lake is now well oxygenated. Trout are free to roam throughout most of the lake. The sun continues to warm the shallows, stimulating plant growth, resulting in increased invertebrate activity and hatches. During the summer, lakes once again stratify. Warm water sits above deep, cooler water separated by a narrow band of water called the thermocline. Here, the water temperature reduces considerably over a short distance. The thermocline forms at the limit of the sun's energy, creating a physical barrier that prevents the upper and lower portions of the lake from mixing. As water temperature increases, its ability to hold oxygen decreases. Trout leave the shallows to seek deeper, oxygenated water just above the thermocline. During this time, fishing is typically slow or spotty at best, but there are always exceptions. This summer stratification period is often referred to as the summer doldrums. On many productive lakes, algae blooms are a common summer occurrence. In many ways, algae aids fishing by keeping the water temperatures below the bloom cool. Most algae are plants and need sunlight to photosynthesize. Algal growth is always thickest at the surface and in the shallows where sunlight penetration is greatest. Roughly 6 to 10 feet down, algae growth diminishes. Trout cruise beneath the algae cap in relatively cool, oxygenated water. In extreme conditions, heavy algal blooms coupled with warm water forms a toxic partnership. During the day, blue-green algae respires, absorbing carbon dioxide and giving off oxygen. At night, this process reverses. Algae now strips oxygen from the water, releasing carbon dioxide. At the peak of the bloom, blue-green algae begin to die and decompose, further robbing the water of oxygen. Coupled with reduced oxygen due to high water temperatures, trout become stressed. Feeding activity reduces. In extreme circumstances, the reduced oxygen levels result in a summer kill. As with winter kill, summer kills range in intensity from partial to complete. As summer wanes and transitions into fall, days become shorter, air temperatures begin to drop. Trout activity increases. They venture into the shallows to feed aggressively, building their fat reserves that will, for the most part, carry them through winter. Some of the largest fish of the season are caught during the fall. At this time, lakes are entering another period of change. The upper layers cool until they become of similar temperature to the cooler water at and just below the thermocline. When water reaches 39 degrees Fahrenheit or 4 degrees centigrade, it is most dense and begins to sink. Cool, dense water coupled with wind-induced wave action initiates turnover. As with spring, this fall turnover recharges the lake's oxygen levels, allowing it to enter winter in the best possible condition. During this turnover, fishing is typically off for a few days until the water clears and oxygen levels stabilize. Once turnover is complete, fish prowl the shoal area until water temperatures cool to near freezing, forcing the fish to retreat to deeper water. So the four seasons, what's the big deal? Well, 
A good understanding of the Four Seasons Lakes go through makes you a better stillwater angler because you understand what is going on throughout the season, its impact on fish, where they're located, and most of all, it's going to help you catch more fish. Mm -hmm.